Hi, this is Dr. Ellis. Uh, someone at the office probably directed you to this video um, because your child might have hand, foot, mouth. If this doesn't answer your questions or your child meets the criteria that need to be seen, go ahead and call us afterwards and uh, let us know what's going on. But just a little bit of basics about hand, foot, mouth. It's caused by a virus, not a bacteria. It's called Coxsackie virus, the family that it's in. There's a couple strains that go around. One is a little worse than the other. The babies will have, usually it's young children who haven't had it, but adults certainly can get it, so be careful. It's spread through saliva, so that's why a lot of times in the daycare situation, it goes through the entire daycare eventually. Uh, it causes little spots in their, on their hands, their, their hiney, their feet, their legs, and in their mouth, in the roof of their mouth, and they drool a lot, and they might refuse to eat or drink. Sometimes they'll at least drink and that's enough. Don't give them anything acidic that would hurt if they're older kids and they eat nothing like pineapple or orange juice or anything like that. The fever is relatively low grade between 101 to 102 or 103. Um, it's not like the other Coxsackie virus that gives you the ulcers only in the throat with no rash. It gives you a higher fever. That one's called herpangina. They're the same family, they're transmitted the same way, but hand, foot, mouth has usually a lower grade fever uh, and a rash. You can use Tylenol or Motrin for the fever, but if your baby is less than six months, we use 102.2 as the cutoff. If they have 102.2 or more for more than 24 hours, we need to see them, or if you're unsure of the diagnosis. The reason we use that number is because that's, uh, the, the temperature that's recommended to check if they have a urinary tract infection if they have a fever. Under three months, any fever, kids need to be seen, even if it's 100.4, so you need to check with us right away. If they're over six months of age, the criteria for them to be seen, if it's more than four days of any fever, or even one time a fever of 104. So you want, want to bring them in in that case. What to do about the symptoms? Um, if they're a little bit older, you can try this thing we call magic mouthwash. So you mix like an ounce of Maalox or Mylantha, the liquid antacid, with an ounce of children's Benadryl. And that combination kind of has a numbing effect. And you can give like half a teaspoon every couple hours to the kid or dip a uh, wash rag and let them suck on it. Um, but you know, that's optional. Sometimes just Tylenol and Motrin do the trick. If they're really drooling and totally refusing fluids, you want to make sure they have ideally uh, a urine every eight to hours, minimum of every 12 hours, they have to have a, a, a wet diaper. Uh, the, the virus, like I said, is excreted in the saliva mainly that week that they have the illness, but it also, because it actually replicates in the intestinal tract, even though it doesn't give you intestinal symptoms, it's excreted in the stool, in the poop, for four to six weeks afterwards. So that's why it kind of goes through the entire daycare and you can catch it in pools in the summertime and we usually have summertime outbreaks of this. Uh, because of that, when you wash, when you change your baby's diaper, make sure that you wash your hands and then use alcohol gel and ideally don't have like a, a changing pad cover, just use a, just the pad itself and clean it with alcohol. And if you change your baby at someone else's house or at a store, make sure you clean it off afterwards with alcohol so you don't pass it on to the, to the other kids. And your child can return to daycare even if they have a rash, if they have had no fever for 24 hours without having to take uh, Tylenol or Motrin. So if they're feeling better and you think they're good enough to go, they can go as long as it's uh, 24 hours fever free. A few months later, a couple months after the disease, if your baby had a lot, your child had a lot of lesions, sores on the hands and feet around the nails and toes, they may like lose their fingernails or have a line of growth, arrested growth, growth on the fingernails a couple months later. It'll just kind of grow out and be fine later. So that's totally normal. And if your child has big sores, you know, one of the varieties, it doesn't just affect the hands and feet. It kind of, they'll have sores on their knees and on their arms and they're kind of almost open look like, uh, like open sores, you can use antibiotic ointment to prevent an infection. And you certainly can bathe your baby when they're sick with this, with soap and water, and that prevents infections too. All right, call us if your child meets the criteria that need to be seen, if you're not sure of the diagnosis, or if you have any questions. Thanks.